Hello everyone, I'm Anton64. And this is THD. And welcome, very dramatic intro, by the way. And welcome to Metroid 4, otherwise known as Metroid Fusion. A first for HFC, we haven't really done a Metroid run before, but I figured Helldragon and I, I wouldn't really say adore, but we both really like Fusion, so a good place to start. You know, right at the very, very end of the timeline. Well, I mean, uh, you know, Fusion is probably... It's the first Metroid game I ever beat. The first one I ever played was Metroid 2 on Game Boy, and that one has some problems. No map, what the fuck. But, um, you know, even back then, you know, when this game was considered the quote-unquote black sheep of the uh, Metroid family, it was still a really fucking good game. And one thing I love about Fusion, and we'll find out more about later, but the game just drips atmosphere, like, all around. Bad driving too, it drips a ton of that. <laughs> yeah, it starts with Samus just like colliding with meteors. What's going on? We don't know, but we're gonna find out. Just drives towards the asteroid belt. Well, I think I've had a good run. <laughs> well, Metroid games really are short, but please continue. <laughs> yeah, that's the fastest speed run I've ever seen. <laughs> Mexi be damned. Now, this was, uh, uh, you know, one of the first Metroid games to really kind of emphasize a plot line. And uh, some people, I guess, aren't really fans of that. They're more of a fan of just being able to kind of really go through the levels and kind of, you know, sequence break of everything. I can kind of see why. But um, I think here in this game especially, it did a really good job incorporating that kind of classic gameplay uh, with the plot line. Now, there are restrictions, and I'll uh, we'll talk about them as it gets brought up, but... Uh, I still really like the presentation here. I love uh, how it's setting up all the stakes for with uh, what's going on. The cutscenes in particular on the GBA look really good, I think. SR388 obviously is the planet from Metroid 2, where Samus, spoilers, went around killing Metroids. <laughs> yeah, avoid that uh, spoiler talk on the 20-year-old game. I think it's like 20 years old at this point. Oh, jeez, I can't believe I killed all those Metroids. Oh, I'm really feeling it. She had, like, Hollywood shaky cam going on back there. Oh, man, I'm seeing stars! Well, there's only so much you can do with the GBA unless you want to watch two and only two episodes of Pokemon. And uh, I think, like, one or two episodes of Sonic X. Uh Uh-huh. There's going to be a lot of, like, words just to kick off this game. And I think, like Dragon was saying, this is where it divides people because you have games like Super Metroid, which there's a little bit of text here and there, and then you have this, where it's like, here's a novel, and we're going to be you know, giving you bits and pieces throughout the game. And for some people, that draws them out of the atmosphere, but for me, it kind of immerses me. Um, I don't know, you know, that's just my opinion. Do you think when they removed her mask, considering the uh, X had corrupted it, when they removed her mask, did it turn out to be extremely painful? I'm not for, not going to your <laughs> levels, okay? Your depths of depravity. But, uh, you know, I gotta admit, I don't really... This part still kind of confuses me to this day. Uh, what happens is that the X she got attacked with, uh, you know, it infected her, the organic parts of her power suit. I guess that's the shit that makes her turn into, like, a morph ball or whatever, because mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But what I don't get is that after they administer this and we see, like, the new suit, we'll see it in a bit... I never really got what that meant. Was it just, like, the existing power suit with just kind of the shit taken off? Was it, like, a completely different suit altogether? Is it also organic? They don't really go into as much detail as I think I need to kind of understand what's going on with it. Well, Sabbath and the suit are kind of one, and the X can corrupt stuff, so... I don't know, it just looks cool. I think it's just an excuse to have Samus in, like, a different kind of suit. Well, I mean, I understand, but, I mean, I'm looking at this, and they kind of seem to imply that they're... It's, uh, the suit is so bond to her that it's kind of like, you know, like a Iron Man's whole heart respirator thing? That's kind of the vibe I thought they were going for. But then later on, we can see she gets out of it, so I really don't know, to be honest. I guess I'm just stupid. Uh, I love being talked at by computers. Who needs humans, really? I know, man. It's just like, well, hopefully we get to a point where we don't have to rely exclusively on computers, because I've seen one too many sci-fi movies to know that doesn't work out. I'm not sure, but was this the first game to have Samus have, like, any sort of personality? Yeah, uh, I, again, you know, this is the first one that really kind of went in on the plot, and, uh, it sort of had, uh, Samus talking, you know, more and more, uh, directly, and, uh, compared to other games, I think here it's done a lot, you know, kind of in coordination with 
how we've seen her as a whole. She's very stoic. She's very reserved. You know, she's very, she keeps to herself, you know, and I think here, especially most of her conversations in this game are going to be based uh, with that computer we saw. And I think that kind of fits better because Samus seems like the kind of person who would be more comfortable talking to a computer in all honesty. Well, she spends most of her time gunning down like Cthulhu monsters. That's true, and, you know, adventuring in isolated uh, areas, so it can make sense, I think, that uh, her social skills aren't exactly up to par. I much prefer Samus' original ship. I don't think the government took her needs into account when they built this one. It needs to look like my helmet. That's the only thing I asked for. Yeah, this one isn't nearly as fat and comfortable enough. I'm probably going to be speeding through this text, because as you can see, it's, it's crawling pretty slowly. Well, that's why they call it a text crawl. It's not a text marathon, you know. Anyway, welcome to the BSL. This is where this is where we're going to be spending the majority of our time here. We're not going to be going off to like secret asteroid base or Z asteroid base zone two or anything. I don't know. I much prefer uh, Metroid games and you know games like this that just have the one big level. Like I didn't like how Prime Three. Uh, kind of split it up between different planets. I just like a one whole cohesive world. Prime 3 is actually my least favorite of the Prime trilogy, but um, yeah, that's neither here nor there right now. If you play in a Metroid, you know what to expect here. You can shoot, you've got jumping abilities, you can like duck down, you can like aim diagonally and whatnot, but for the most part, we're going to have to recover most of our abilities, because what's a Metroid game that starts without a nerfed Samus? Yeah, they always have to kind of find some way to explain why Samus doesn't keep all the shit she's got. At least here we can say, oh well, she got attacked by a fucking, you know, goo virus. Okay, that makes sense, but then you have, like, games where it's like, what was it, Prime 1? Where she, like, trips over a rock and then she loses everything? <laughs> okay, I just want to point out, in Prime 1, she basically gets electrocuted and slammed into a wall, and then you take an elevator ride up where you get told that all your power-ups have disappeared. Yeah, especially the uh, Morph Ball, which you would think that, uh, you know, is kind of integrated with the suit to begin with. I forgot how to roll, damn it. Okay, let's go investigate these life signs, and you can already tell the atmosphere is creeping in. Oh yeah, like, uh, this game, I really think, it's kind of one of the few horror games I'll actively play. <laughs> because one thing this game loves to do is really establish that sense of... Well, Dread, you know, and, uh, you know, as a side note, I would love to see a Metroid Dread on 3DS, thanks. It really kind of builds that atmosphere of whereas you're really alone in this kind of abandoned place. There's nobody here except these creatures, you know, that you'll be encountering. And then there's other stuff that may be coming up that may want to see you dead. And I really think that this game does a great and effective job in establishing that sense of foreboding all throughout the entire place. And just in case you're wondering, yes, Helldragon and the plot of this game are in a relationship, and they will be getting married, and you're invited to the ceremony. Well, you're not invited, because you're going to be sassing me. Yes, the X can absorb the DNA of their hosts and basically go crazy. You're going to want to look out for that. It's going to be affecting us a lot throughout the course of the game. Yeah, I think the X virus learned a lot from the Maverick virus from Mega Man X. You know, they kind of, they mentored under each other. At least here I do like how they give a justification to why uh, Samus, you know, can pick up shit from enemies she's killed. Where in the other games it's just, there are these fucking energy balls, go nuts. Yeah, it's like if Nintendo felt the need to give an explanation as to why Mario can pick up coins and recover health. Oh, he was infected by the C virus. <laughs> well, first off, that sounds like a Resident Evil thing too. I thought the explanation is going to be, you should pick it up with your hands. Like, I want to see like a toad give like the most sarcastic explanation for why you can pick up coins. Your power-up is in another castle, Mario. <laughs> you don't need me here to say this, Mario, but just in case. Well, let's head on over to the big obnoxious flashing target. Thanks, computer. Now, the big thing about this game again is, uh, like I said, there's a big focus on the plot. And as a result of that, uh, a lot of people have considered uh, Fusion one of the more Black Sheep uh, installments of the uh, Metroid games because the way the uh, computer, you know, your C your commanding officer, quote-unquote, for this, um, you know, basically keeps certain areas locked off until you get to that point in the story. Yeah, and yeah the game railroads you to uh, cut through Hell Dragon's most verbose of conversations. Uh. Well, I mean, I understand why people don't like that. I get that. Metroid is a game all about sequence breaking, it's all about exploration. That's totally fun. 
but I don't think it's as bad here compared to other games, you know? Like, here, it feels a bit more respectful. <laughs> I like how much restraint we're showing in not shit-talking other M here. I'm trying to avoid shit-talking other M, because otherwise that would become a really repetitive uh, trek. But, um, you know, I just wanted to bring that up in terms of fusion, and, uh, again, for me... You know, uh, I'm somebody who likes having a map, and I honestly don't mind having a clear path of where to go. Like, I love how Zero Mission does it, where they just tell you to do whatever, but you get an indicator of where to go next on the map. And that's it. That's great, I think. But here it's not necessarily that bad. I don't mind, like, linear progression so long as it's interesting. So, for me, someone who never grew up with, like, Super Metroid, never touched 2 until, uh, I think I got it on the Virtual Console, and that was a bit of a waste of money, because I haven't really gone back to it. I watched the Super Gaming Bros play for a bit instead, and, um, never played the original Metroid. I waited until Zero Mission. But, um, as long as the, uh, the linear path is interesting, don't really have a problem with it. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna pass through here and get me missiles. Still don't get this. How do you download the ability to shoot missiles? That doesn't make sense. You want to download munitions? <laughs> yeah, man, you could be pirating these missiles. <laughs> Fucking space pirates. No wonder they get all their stuff for the cheap. Oh, sorry. How much power did we drain downloading those babies? Well, it turns out we had the AC on this whole time, so yeah, that kind of racks up the bill. Another great part of the uh, atmosphere, I love the music. Like, it's just, it's so, like I said, foreboding, and it's so, you know, dramatic, and it really gets you into that. Well, Metroid has always had great music, but I think here in Fusion, it really exemplifies, um, you know, the kind of atmosphere they were trying to build. You know, there's certain people who dislike the GBA sound font, not going to name names, <coughs> Flame, <coughs> Flame, but... Yeah, it does its job pretty well, and there's a few standout tracks here and there. I think the Prime games have better music, but that's kind of being unfair. You know, I do have to say, though, um, I guess I just want to mention this about the suit. Uh, I know they wanted to get Samus to wear something different, and I get that, that's fine. But I really don't know what they were going for here. I guess it's supposed to maybe communicate the whole organic nature of, like, what had happened to her. And I can kind of see that, but at the same time, it's just this weird hodgepodge that doesn't really make any sense. I like the spines on, like, the forearms, you know, that kind of jut off. It makes her seem a little bit more Metroid-esque, actually, because obviously they ejected her with Metroid stuff, and Metroids are the natural enemies of the X. I think the Chizo, or the Chozo, sorry, I'm thinking of the Chizo mythos here, the Chozo actually created Metroids to deal with um, the X on, I forget which planet, I f it may have been Zebes, or Zebes, or however you pronounce it. Yeah, uh, the uh, Chozo word for warrior is Metroid, so, and again, yeah, they were created to fight the yeah, X, and uh, I, I can kind of see where they were going with the suit to kind of emphasize the part Metroid nature she has going, and I do think that's kind of interesting, but uh, other than that, I guess the blue is just kind of throws me off a little. I don't know. Okay, we're coming to our first boss here, Hell Dragon. Now, what I like about these things is that they always assume the weirdest shit. Like, we'll see some really weird guys later, but where the hell did they get the sample for this thing? Was it on the ship? Well, it's a military base, so I assume they were conducting all kinds of crazy experiments. This is Arachnus X, and that's a running theme with bosses. It's a crazy name, tack X on at the end. This thing is going to fire, like, you know, well, fire at you, really, and then... At, when it reaches like a certain point in the stage, it will roll towards you, do a bit of damage, back and forth, and it will regress into the core here. Just fire a few missiles into it, and then that's pretty much it. Yeah, that happens with a lot of the uh, bosses. They often have that core X phase just to take it out before you finally kill it. And again, somehow you get abilities from this. I Again, you know, the organic nature of the suit, but at the same time, it's not going to make sense for some <laughs> abilities later on. It's cool, though, how you have to fight the bosses who are wielding your powers. Yeah, it gives a really nice uh, Mega Man element to everything. I don't think we brought this up yet, but this is going to be a 100% run, so expect us to uh, go after missiles, go after energy tanks, and when it comes to it, yes, power bombs as well. 
And another thing I might as well bring up uh, while we're here. I notice, uh, you know, I, I might be talking a lot about the stuff I find doesn't make sense personally, but that doesn't mean I hate the game. I actually really like Fusion, and I kind of want to just emphasize that uh, throughout this playthrough. This game is really good, and if you haven't played it yet, you really should. It's great. What are you doing watching a playthrough of this? Oh, wait, no. No, don't go away. Come back. Now, watch the playthrough as they play along with us. We are a strategy guide. Ah, yes. Yes, there we go. Got some great music stings going on, though. I love how the, that computer in the space station must have some really nice subwoofers for that kind of shit. I'm kind of giving the game away here, but there's no elevator music when you take the elevators to the different sectors, and I think they missed a trick there. Just maybe have, like, da 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 You have some kind of, like, MIDI, like, 8-bit Metroid music playing as you go down those babies. That would actually have been really great. I kind of want. I kind of wish they had that now. There's like one element of comedy in the game, and we probably won't be seeing that because there is a pretty hard to find Easter egg. And you guys probably know what I'm talking about if I mention the term Shine Spark. But um, it mostly takes itself pretty seriously, and that's Metroid for you. It's probably like Nintendo's most serious franchise. Yeah, I just hope, uh, you know, we uh, get some new games coming for it soon because I do love Metroid. Well, I suppose that will end things for today. I hope things don't go to parts between parts one and two. Oh no, it's a it's a Samus clone. <laughs> Heard you put me in Smash like I wouldn't find out. Oh Jesus. Okay, guys, we'll see you in part two when the investigation continues. Goodbye for now.